Hello everyone. I'm here to give you an analysis of a major economic indicator that came out yesterday. Uh, we had CPI, Consumer Price Index, that was reported yesterday by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this reported on one measurement of inflation for January, basically last month. Now, CPI is a very popular measurement of inflation. It's not a complete measurement of inflation. It measures inflation uh, only in the consumer sector. And this has been of great concern for many people over the last couple of years. And that's because prices have been going up on average. And that's a key to understand that CPI is a measurement of average prices, which means some prices can go up for some goods or services some can go down but on average a let's say a basket of goods costs you more even though some of the items in that basket may have gone down okay you can see here um let me get my pen going right here this is for january and what we see here we consumer price index y over y that's year over year and what that does it takes the measurement of the price index in January of 2024 and simply divides that by the price index of January 2023. And it went up 3.1%. So that's how much prices went up in the consumer sector over one year. Now, as you can see, this 3.1% is a lot lower than it was at its peak. Its peak was right about here, and that was about 9% in, I would say, mid-2023, uh, roughly. And uh, so we saw, so you could see inflation was pretty tame. So if you look at a high of 4% and a low of, let's say, 1%, you could see uh, CPI, which is this blue line, was in that range for quite some time, for over 10 years. It fluctuated a little bit, but it fluctuated within this range. And then COVID hit right here. And then we had two things impacting inflation. One, uh, when we came out of COVID, in terms of the, kind of the travel and work restrictions, uh, there was a lot of pent up demand. And so uh, people started to spend a lot of money because they got some stimulus from the government and they were saving money at the time. And that contributed to the big spike in the rate of inflation. The other thing that contributed to it is a restriction in supply. There were a lot of factory shutdowns. A lot of people couldn't go to work. Uh, and this is globally, the global supply chain had a supply shock. And that also contributed to the uh, spike in inflation. And as you can see, inflation has slowed considerably. Now, what's kind of concerning is it's kind of stabilizing right around the high threes, high three percents or mid three percents. This is a lot higher than where it was stabilized prior to COVID right here. Uh, but again, a lot better than it was in 2023 so that's the, that, that's the good news now let me just erase some of this stuff the other line that you see here is this gold line right here see this gold line now basically this is the same measurement but they've taken out two very volatile components uh, food prices and energy prices and that's what we call core cpi so core cpi is a measurement of inflation but it it takes out volatile components and the reason why you do that is because uh, as you can see do you see the blue line how it is fluctuating a lot up and down up and down and the gold line is very stable which means the the volatility you see in this blue line is attributable to fluctuating food prices and energy prices. And right now you can see that the gold line is a little bit higher than the blue line, which means 
um, that um, energy prices are causing the overall CPI to fall. So we've had a big reduction in energy prices. If you if you've paid for gasoline lately, you could see gasoline prices have come down considerably. But what still remains elevated are food prices. So that's the two competing elements in uh, the measurement of inflation there. If we go a little bit down here, you could see that there are other types of measurements of inflation. Um, this gold line are what we call um, commodities inflation. And this is, I believe, uh, services. So you could see that there's many different ways we could break down the CPI number. One is looking at the overall number, that's the total. Another way is to take the total, but take out two co volatile components, food and energy. Now, inflation has been probably the most important topic on people's minds for quite some time. And the fact that it's calming down is good. But keep in mind, just because inflation is slowing, that still means prices are going up. It's just going up at a slower rate. It was going up at 9% per year here. Now it's only going up 3.1% per year. So, and, it, and this also depends upon what a consumer buys on a daily basis. You may be buying things, you may be buying items that have gone up more than the measurement you see here in CPI simply because of your buying habits. For example, if college tuition has been rising rapidly faster than 3.1% and you're a student, well, your personal inflation rate is going to be higher than the national average. So your purchasing habits is a big part of how you perceive inflation. And inflation really colors people's attitudes to how the economy is doing. Unemployment is very low. Job growth is very high. But because inflation has been high lately, some people still feel pessimistic about the overall economy. But the good news is it's getting better. And so that's where I wanted to leave it. And hopefully things are a little more clear for you.